Well, hello, Stampers. It's the Pampered Stamper, and happy Wednesday to you. Wednesday means it's time for stamping through my stash. My name is Jackie van der Sarboot, and I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in both Holland, the Netherlands, and in Canada. It's because I have homes in both countries, and I spread my life between two countries as well. And I like to do my work, so I need to be a demonstrator in both markets. So that means I can serve you in both markets as well, and I'm really happy about that. Stamping Through My Stash started about two years ago and the purpose is that I ink up every stamp set and use all the dies that I own. And I want to encourage you to do the same thing, to be a creator and not just a collector. And the bonus is that you will find out if your stamps work properly and if your dies are cutting properly. Because you have three months from the time of purchase if there's a problem to get your products replaced. So that's super important. The second benefit is that if you use your stuff, you are more likely to keep using it. You will be inspired and you're going to want to create with it. You're going to remember why you purchased it in the first place. And there's almost always a surprise where you think, oh, this is cool. I didn't realize that this was included. So that's a lot of fun. So today I'm sharing with you an online exclusive. And I think I need to zoom out. It is called Love This Moment. And to be totally honest with you, I kind of overlooked it. I love the big smile. I love the big happy. This is meant mostly for scrapbooking because it has all the great words in there. See, the happy with you details, notes, highlights, the who, what, where, when, why thing. It inspires journaling. But you know what? I want to print out some photos. So while I haven't done it yet, so I'm not going to be making a scrapbook page with you today, I'm definitely going to get some pictures printed off. I'm tired of having just photos on my phone. I want to make some old fashioned scrapbooks again. And maybe you are, will also be so inspired. So before I show you, I'm going to show you this card, which actually put me over the top for wanting this set. So I got this card from Yvonne Spickmans van Bruggen, who is the Creative Teacup. She's also an artisan design team member, and she made this card for my birthday, which is so sweet. And she is so clever that she combined this stamp set with the, um, oh, I forget what it's called. Let me grab it for a minute. So she combined it with the sweetly scripted set with that happy birthday. And what she did is she cut off the happy birthday so that it just looks like not without those long, um, lines on either side of it so I just think it looks great I think it's I love the zinnia paper I love the colors and I just think it's really cool and when you're on when it's your birthday people say smile happy birthday and they take a picture and uh, it just it makes me happy this card made me very happy so I'm looking forward to recreating it I'm having a class at the end of July so if you live in the Netherlands I'd love to have you come for my class but in the meantime let's stamp everything I put them a lot of the things on a block here. Oh, and before I go any further, last week I did a stamping through my stash video with Seaside Wishes and I totally forgot to show you these two dies. So they would have been a good addition. This is the card that we made last week with stamping through my stash and I think that would have looked pretty cool on here too. See, I could even add it. So great bundle. Sorry that I forgot. They were left on my desk and I got excited and forgot to share. So hopefully I don't forget anything today. So let's see. And that skinny little piece of, of plastic, that's what covers your stamps afterwards. The thick piece you can use um, as an acetate window sheet as for a shaker card or something like that. Okay, so let's get some memento ink on here. And then you're going to see all these sayings and all the little things. You can make, you can use them for... Um, elements in your journaling boxes on your scrapbook page or as um, background like you can make background paper I hope I've inked this up well enough and here we go one two I think I got too close to the edge of the paper let's see there we go and now we're gonna do this with a brighter color Maybe clips or coral. Now, I forgot to run over these with a eraser. That is a great trick to getting your photopolymer stamps to stamp really well the first time. You can see that it's kind of like 
a little um, dotty looking. But anyway, still cute. And then there's also this one. And I'm going to show you what Stampin' Up! did with this. I was going to case this card, and I'm not sure if I'm going to or not. There we go. So you can color that in with blends and fussy cutter. That's also a nice element for a journaling box or a page. Now I'm going to share my screen for a minute and I'm going to go online to the online exclusives. Now here's the card that I wanted to case, but I've just wasted time. You can see here in the background they've done some tone-on-tone -tone stamping with that flower and here they have some strips of paper. I have no idea where this paper is from. It's driving me crazy. So here's the element that's been watercolored and then they've taken the word note and it's supposed to be notes and they've just done it with Versamark and embossed just the word note. So this is a happy note. This is not a difficult technique. It's a little persnickety. Um, maybe we'll give it a try. Okay, so that's the card and then here is the scrapbook page. I'm just going to make it bigger and I'm going to walk you through what happened. So here they've stamped the stamp with the lines and stamped smile on it. They've done a little spatter in the background that they've repeated that smile with this line here and here. And then these are just, this is just blends or an ink pad just swiped across and then stamped tone on tone with all those little elements. I thought it's brilliant, simple, this moment, happy with you, memories, this picture, you know, it's just, yeah, like, oh, this moment, happy with you, memories, this picture. It's like, I wouldn't think to use it this way, but it's pretty cool. So I thought that would be helpful for you to know. And now I'm going to go back to here and here. And now we're going to try to make a card together. Okay. Let's see what we're going to do next. So I'm going to case the card that I shared with you from the online exclusives, but I'm using a totally different color palette. So this is the second largest circle from the um, Stitch Shapes dies, the Stylish stylish Shapes dies. And this is Melon Mambo, three and three quarter inches by five. And this card base is 11 inches by four and a quarter scored at five and a half. So I'm taking some Versamark and we're just gonna ink up this uh, flower and we're just going to stamp it in the background oh I should be more careful you know what I, I made a mess here I was too quickly quick here so I'm going to turn it around I'm not happy with that so making sure you go off the edge there I'm just going to go around So this looks, it's amazing how dark the tone on tone stamping is. You don't expect it from Versamark, but you get a really nice background stamp. So now I'm going to take the other thing off um, and it's going to be happy, not smile. We're going to stamp the word happy on the bottom of the circle in Melon Mambo. And then I don't have to fussy cut it, so this is easier. Here. We are going to fussy cut the flower, though, so we'll, we'll just, yeah. So the word happy is going to go here. There, happy. And then I want to do happy with you instead of happy notes, happy with you. And I'm not going to emboss it. We're just going to put it on a piece of white. I'm wondering, I have a little strip. I'm wondering if this is wide enough. Sometimes you're just so happy with the things you find on your desk. Okay. Now I've got to find that block that has all the words on it. How can something like that go missing? So I'm going to zoom in because this stamp says happy with you. And I don't want happy, happy with you. So I'm going to, and you cannot use blends to color on your ink, on your stamps, just in case you thought you could. So now 
I'm going to just take my brush tip, Mella Mambo. You know what? Oh yeah, I thought I did clean this. I don't know. We're gonna find out if this looks a little black and pink at the same time. We'll know that we I didn't clean my my stamp. Okay. And then a little huffing, and then here we go. I did not clean it. I'm happy with you. Well, we're, we're going to do it again, and then maybe it will be cleaner. I'm just going to move this Mambo, Mella Mambo ink pad out of the way before I get my sleeve in it. Okay, let's try again. Happy with you. And then if you are worried that you're going to get ink where it doesn't want to go, see, I just did there, then you put a sticky note over top of the other words. So you want to get your ink on there. And then healthy huffing. And then with you. That's okay. The, the W is a little bit light, but that's all right. Put my thing back on. I'm using so good with words today. My thing, my lid. So I'm happy with you. You can see that. Yeah, that's still cute. That that it is nice when you emboss because it gives you more of a color contrast. And I don't want to trim this too much, otherwise my dimensionals aren't going to fit. So happy with you. We'll pop that up because that will give it a little bit more oomph. And I'm just gonna use an edge from my dimensionals. There. Did I cut it too long? I think I did shorten it up a little bit okay so that's what's really nice about the dimensional sheets you can use the edges to cut thin little strips and you know maybe two minis would have done it too but this makes me happy happy with you there now I'm just I'm not gonna waste anything I'm going to take this flower that I've already stamped and we're going to color it with some blends and just use the I'm going to leave a little bit of space in the middle because I want to put a little bit of yellow in there and then I'm just going around these and then I'm going to fill it in with the light And you could do a color wash with this too, but it is kind of nice. Oh, Gerard is watching TV outside. I need to close the door. One sec. Okay, so that looks pretty. And I might go with a lighter, just the light Malamambo here. And I could get a color lifter in there just to lighten it up. And here's another one. Going pretty fast. Now a little bit of Daffodil Delight in the middle here. And we're going to do these little guys like this. And you can see that I'm not using two colors. I'm just using one. So it doesn't have to be a really, see how cute that is? Quick and easy. Now I'm going to use Granny Apple Green. Let's see, that's the light. This one is the dark. And I'm just going to go on the veins here with the dark. And it's nice that to use the both the online exclusives and the um, catalog as idea books. Because we don't have to, it's amazing what can happen when you use the same idea but change up the paper and the colors and you get a totally different card. But it's nice to not have to start at square one with an idea. So you can get your inspiration from anything, even when you're shopping and you see, I don't know, other artwork. Okay, so now I'm going to use Old Olive so that we have two greens in here. I'm just putting a little bit of dark in the bottom of each leaf. And then I'll go over with the light. And it'll give us just a little bit of variation. And I'm using the fine tip because it's a pretty small 
area. You don't have to press hard. And it's just such an easy way to get a double colored leaf. It's not rocket science, but it looks nicer than using just one color. But if you want to use one color, that's fine. And if you want to blend it a bit more, just go over top of it a little bit more. And now we're just going to fussy cut that. And before I do that, I'm just going to, and we'll move this. I'm just going to cut it out like so. And then the trick is to move the paper as you cut. And then you don't have to move your scissors so much. So we're going to leave some white space in between. I'm not going to cut everything. There. Because it's going to go on top of the white circle anyway. So don't you don't have to make this too difficult. But trust me, by turning the paper, it really makes it easier to do your fussy cutting. You know, sometimes you just have to think, how do I do this again? So that I can teach it. And of course, I have to make sure that my paper is, oops, now I've got a bigger edge here, underneath where the camera is. And then that hopefully there's enough light. There. Now, I don't know if I would have thought to fussy cut this if I hadn't seen it on the page from Stampin' Up. But I do love using this stamp as a background. That's great. You could also emboss it on white. That would also look really pretty. And now I just have to find some thread. And I'm going to, I think I'm going to use the Zinnia paper because it has that beautiful melon mambo. And I'm going to cut some strips to put in the background. Anyway, I hope that you guys are inspired by this stamp set. I would love to hear from you if you are a, scrapbook, a scrapbooker or if you're thinking like me to get back into it. So now look, this is going to go on the top like so. See? Isn't that pretty? It just really makes it, in, turns it into a beautiful design element. And now I'm just going to find some, I'm just putting a little bit of adhesive along the bottom because I don't know how far my flowers are going to stick up over the top. There. See, and now this is going to go here, but the card had strips of paper going on. I'm not sure if I'm going to do the strips of paper. Here. I'm going to decide. Okay, so I've cut some strips of this zinnia paper, and I want them to be, they're all, they were about five and a quarter inches, but I've got them a little bit uneven at the bottom. And I'm just going to cut because they were too long. So I'm going to move this and we're just going to lay them. And I, they're all a different width. And I'm not sure. I think it may add some interest. Maybe three is enough. And then, yeah, I think it's pretty cool. It's subtle. This one has to be a bit shorter. And we're just going to lay them on. Maybe this one too. And then put a little strip of adhesive. So I'm not even looking at the sketch again now. I'm just making it my own. And I just, the idea of the tone on tone and the strips of paper just adds a bit of visual interest. So here. slide that a bit. The, um, there. Maybe we'll do one more. Uh, you know what? This is good. And now we're going to put that on. We're going to tie a string around with a bow, and then we're going to put it on our card. Now, I have this twine, and it's a stripe. It almost looks a little orangey, but I'm, I'm going for it. I, uh, 
It's probably retired, but you know what? Use what you have in your stash. And it's all good. I think that the recipient of this card is going to get a bonus hair. I have curly hair and I shed like a dog. Um, nothing I can do about that. So we'll tie it in a knot. And then we'll tie it in a bow. There we go. I love stripes. Stripes just remind me of summer, the beach, I don't know why. Awnings, I think. That's why. No, I do. If you want to move a, a piece of ribbon or something, if you do this and curve your cardstock, then you can move it really easily. That's a little tip. Now let's see. Is that going to fit? It is. We're going to pop that up with a few dimensionals and you know what sometimes I like to just put my dimensionals on the cardstock because I want it to straddle the string I know that I'm going to cover up this with my circle so no biggie and then sorry There, I try to get those in the garbage because Gerard just vacuumed and I don't want to make a mess. Okay, and now this is going to go on the card and then we are done. I could pop this up too. I think that will add some visual interest and I'm going to use my strips that I have left over. I feel so generous with myself when I do this, but it holds the, the twine in place as well. There, that's enough. That will be just fine and then in the inside of the card we'll finish it off with a piece of white and a nice tone on tone card we could add some gems I think it's really pretty happy with you okay I thought I had a piece you know what I I had a piece all cut out and I used it to cut my circle we'll use one of oh wow We'll use one of my um, extra strips. I'm just going to hold it on here for a minute instead of measuring. And I'm just going to trim it like so. There. And then that can go in the inside. It's always nice when your card is finished off inside so that when you reach to give it out to somebody, you don't have to go back to work to finish off your card. I'm not going to stamp anything in the inside yet because I'm not sure who it's going to go to. And I don't always stamp something in the inside. Sometimes I just write my message. It doesn't always have to have a stamp. That's why a little strip of patterned paper is just a perfect little thing to finish off your card. And I kind of like leaving a little white edge there too. There. There we go. I hope that you enjoyed stamping through my stash. And uh, I, I, I don't know if the rest of the video is not going to be bright like this. I didn't have the brightness on my screen at full capacity. So let me know if you noticed that my video was brighter at the end or not. That would be helpful to know. Now we can zoom out again. And now you might look at this in a different light than what you did before. All right, guys. Thank you for joining me for stamping through my stash. If you're watching on YouTube and you enjoyed it, please share, comment, Pin my stuff. That all helps so much. And on, on Facebook, same thing. If you share with other people, more people will find me. And that's always great. Business always depends on word of mouth, whether it's actual physical word of mouth or electronic. I appreciate you so much. Thanks for being with me today. And happy stamping, my friends. Bye.